let's look at how to write a program that calculates Pascal's triangle. So first of all, this is Pascal's triangle. Pascal's triangle has ones down the sides right here. And each row is made up of a bunch of numbers where the outside numbers are ones and then the inside numbers are the sum of the two numbers above. So the two is the sum of one plus one. And you get down to the bottom, you got 75 is the sum of 35 plus 35. 56 is the sum of 21 plus 35. And so you can see how each one of these things basically gets added up. And we're going to look at this as a recursive problem because obviously if 10, for example, is right here, we can just add the previous two numbers together in order to get this new number. So let's go ahead and write the code for this. So I'm going to have two different functions. One's just doing, going to calculate out the individual numbers. So the int, let's call this Pascal. And I'm going to re receive the row and the column. And just so you can see that we can display this as a bunch of numbers, I'm going to go ahead and just return one right here. So we'll make a triangle first, and then we'll try to display it. Then I'm going to create another function. We we'll draw triangle, and I just want to give it a number of rows. So it'll draw all the rows. And what I'm going to do is create a for loop, and I'll do for int i equals, let's go with 1. Let's we'll start with 1. So the first row will be 1 instead of 0. Then that means that, let's just do r. r is less than or equal to the total rows r plus plus. All right. And inside of that, I'm going to need to do each of the columns and I'll do columns from one to whatever there is. Now on the first row, there is exactly one column and the second row, there is exactly two columns. So that makes it pretty easy. So I'll just do four and C equals one. C is less than or equal to R. So number of rows, C++. plus plus. So then you can figure out which column and which row you are on. And then I am just going to have it dry out this number and see how that works out. So I've got this C out. And I'm going to just display my Pascal for that row and column. R and C. Now I'm going to have a new line at the end of each set of columns, so each row. So I'll do that as well. SCD C out and do and L. Now in order to separate each of the numbers, I probably need something else as well. So I'm going to go ahead and press a tab character right here. So, so just indent it. And then we have our triangle and that should do it except it's going to be all skewed in the side so we'll take a look at this right now so i'll do draw triangle and i'll pass the number 10. so i'll see 10 rows and if i run this it just has ones right now you can see all the ones and you can see 10 rows of well up to 10 columns now what I want to do is try to make it more balanced so it's easier to see, so you can see if it's actually correct. So I'm going to need to put in some leading spaces. So before each set of numbers, I'm going to have some leading spaces. Leading spaces. And I can just do a little for loop. So for and I, let's do equals zero. Well, the i is less than and so for the lower number rows 
I'm going to have much more space. So I'm going to do a rows minus R. And let's just do that divide by two because you assume half the space on each side. And then I'll do I plus plus. And all I want to do is just do a, a little C out. C out plus T. All right. So we'll go ahead and run this and we'll see the leading spaces. And let's do the row of numbers and run this and see what it looks like now. So we can see now we are a kind of a triangle, but it's not quite balanced because this first one right here should be indented a little further or more. And I'm guessing this is about maybe eight characters. So let's go ahead and put an extra four characters before each one in some cases. So on the odd number of rows, we want to put more spaces. So odd space. And then we'll just put our um, row call, call number right here. So if my row is odd, so percent two equals one, then we want to add some more space. So do a little C out here and we'll add, let's try four spaces. And see what happens. So I go ahead and run this. You can see that now it is in fact a nice pretty triangle. Although the numbers aren't correct. They're all ones. So now let's look at the actual well recursive function here. So what we want is if it's on the outside edge we want to return one. So what's the outside edge? So this is our base case. The outside edge is either if the column is one, so it's the first one, or if the column equals the row, because it's the last one. So if the call equals one, or the call equals the row, then we want to return one. Then we want the inductive case, the inductive step. So what is that? Well, if it isn't that, we want to add the two above it. So we want to add the two in the row above it. So we want to return. And what are the two? Well, we got Pascal of, we want the previous row, so row minus one. And we want two different columns. So one is the previous column. So if you could jump back to our picture here, you can see, for example, three, we want to get this right here would be one, two, three, four. So it would be row four, column two. And we want to get row three, column one, and row three, column two. So we want, so our column minus one and our column, and both of them with the row minus one. So jump back here. So we do our call minus one. Plus, we want Pascal with our row minus one and our column. If we return that, then we will get the two previous added together and we'll return this number. So let's go ahead and run this triangle again now with our recursive function in place. And you see now we have Pascal's triangle all the way down to well, 10 rows, which is actually one higher than what I had in my previous diagram we saw. So this is how to do Pascal's triangle. Now, if you do Pascal's triangle much further than this, you're going to have issues because, well, you kind of forget things. And every time you run this Pascal thing again, you have to calculate stuff out. So you actually want to have some kind of memory built in here that says, if I've seen this previous row in this column before, I'll just return what I have saved. If not, I want to calculate it out. And then you can speed it up. Um, but for now, 
Um, this is how you do Pascal's triangle. And when this thing runs, you can see that for this, there were 126 different base cases that ran in order to get this 126. Because it's all ones, adding it up. And there you go, Pascal's triangle.